Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about these gauges. Sometimes when I'm doing an air conditioner inspection, the customer will watch me the whole entire time, and towards the end, they ask me, hey, um, we noticed you didn't check our Freon pressures. And I say, yes, I actually did not. And they get a little confused by that, and they say, well, isn't that included in the inspection? Aren't you going to check it? And my answer and explanation to them is what I want to talk about today. So my question is, how often should you gauge up or hook up your hoses to the air conditioner to check refrigerant pressures? Do you do it on every single AC inspection and AC repair as preventative maintenance to make sure the pressures are okay? Do you do it upon customer's request? Or maybe if the unit is not cooling, that's just the first thing you check, perhaps it's slow on refrigerant? Or do you not hook up your gauges unless you absolutely have to? And that happens to be my personal standpoint, and let me just quickly explain why. So the air conditioner is a permanently sealed system, right? Whatever refrigerant is in there stays in there for the life of the unit. So it's not like a car with gasoline, you know, where every couple of years you have to add some of that stuff into the air conditioner to make sure it keeps running good. Whatever refrigerant is in there, whatever Freon is in there, it stays in there for the life of the unit. Unless there is a leak in the AC system, which of course is not normal. And also, when you hook up your gauges, every time you hook up your gauges to the air conditioner, you're losing about an ounce to two ounces of refrigerant from the system. And if that happens like once or twice, that's no big deal. But imagine if you have an AC inspection done every single year. In about 10 years, you're going to lose over a pound of refrigerant. And if your unit is only a four pound system to begin with, missing a fourth of the charge will make a difference and the homeowner will likely notice that his air conditioner is not cooling quite as well as it used to. And besides losing a little bit of refrigerant every time, you're also running the risk of contaminating the refrigeration system. And I know that most technicians are pretty careful. They keep their hoses clean, especially the fitting, so there's no dirt in there. But of course, every time you hook up your gauges, there is the chance that you can introduce some air, some dirt, or the worst of them, some moisture into the system. And when that stuff gets into the system, the oils that are inside of that refrigerant they start to mix with all that debris, especially with moisture, and cause acid, and that could damage the compressor in the long term. So before I hook up my gauges, I like to check everything else. A lot of times what's actually wrong is something wrong in the airflow system, not in the actual refrigeration system. So the very first thing you want to do is make sure that your condenser coil is clean. Even if it looks clean, sometimes clean looking coils can be very plugged up. So that's just one of the first things I do. I wash down that condenser coil to make sure it's clean. And then I go inside, I check all the vents or the air registers, make sure all of those are open. If there's a bunch of them closed, that can affect the system. Or if you have some returns that are really dirty, or maybe they're blocked by like a couch or a box or something, you wanna have those open. If there's not enough return air, that can mess with the system as well and cause the evaporator coil to start to freeze up. I check the filter and once again, even if the filter looks clean, it might not be clean. One thing I like to do, one test, is to put my thermometer into the supply duct and then measure the temperature and once it stabilizes, I pull that filter out and I see how that affects the temperatures coming out of my supply with the filter out of there. If there's a dramatic change, then of course you know that that filter is dirty and should be replaced. Another thing that can cause the unit not to cool as well is a dirty evaporator coil and the best way to check that would be to visually look at it with a camera or if you have a cased coil to open it up and just look at it from underneath to make sure it's not all plugged up or if you have a static pressure probe kit you can measure the static pressure across the coil and during the air conditioning season a wet coil will normally read about 0.25 inches of water column a clean coil that's what it would read. A dirty one will be like, you know, like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. If you get readings that high, then you know the coil is dirty. Another thing that can mess with airflow is the blower wheel. If the blades in there are just caked with dust and hair and whatever else, that can really decrease the amount of air that that blower wheel is pushing through. And if there's not enough air going through there, that coil, once again, can start to freeze up. So if you reach into your blower housing on the furnace or air handler and just carefully feel in between the blades. If you feel a bunch of gunk, then you gotta get that thing out of there and clean that blower wheel out so you can have better airflow. But of course, this is just my opinion. I personally prefer 
not to hook up my gauges before I check out everything else and make sure everything else is good. Only then will I hook up my gauges to see what's going on with the refrigeration system. But I know there will be people watching this that know quite a bit about air conditioning and I'm curious to know, what do you think about this? To gauge up or not to gauge up? Please do share your opinions with us below. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time. And for those of you still here, let me share something with you. So I've had a stuffy and a runny nose for like the last two weeks and I figured something out. So one time when I was blowing my nose, I heard my ears pop and sometimes when you're stuffy like that, it's kind of hard to blow your nose out. The stuff just isn't coming out. So I figured something out. So I figured, you know, if the nose, the throat and the ears are all connected, in order to push out the stuff better from your nose, why not just close the rest of the stuff? So if you just put the napkin on your hands, close one side of your nostril and close both the ears and then blow out one side of the nose at a time, the stuff flies out of there at twice the velocity it normally does. So next time you have a stuffy nose, do give that a try. You can thank me later.